Okay, so in this movie, what I want to do is try and recreate this little table chair setup based on some of the concepts that we've talked about so far. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is probably try and start with the chairs, and I'm going to start with the top of the chair. So I'm going to come over here to my primitives, and I think a cylinder will probably work well for this. So I'm just going to pop that in and maybe pull it down a little bit. Hit O on the keyboard, sort of zoom in. I'm gonna click on fill it. I wanna turn on my lines too so that I can sort of see what's happening here. And I'm going to adjust my fillet while I get something that I think looks about right. And that looks pretty good, I think, for the top of a chair. I may wanna make this a little bit bigger. Maybe something like that. And you can change this however you want. You want to add more segments to sort of get this curve in here a little bit better. You can do that, but I want to not have so much geometry. So I think that's going to work good for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this chair top. I'm double clicking here. One. And the next thing I want to add is the leg for the chair. So I'm going to put another cylinder in here. I'm going to make this, let's say, 400 centimeters tall. I'm going to take the radius down. I get something that I like. A middle mouse click, go to a four-way view, go into my front view, middle mouse click over here, and hit E on the keyboard and just pull this down and sort of get it in place where I want it. I may want to go into a top view as well. Just kind of get this in where I'm going to want this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put what's called a bend deformer so that I get the little bend that goes right here. Now we didn't talk about the deformers, the bend deformer. We're going to talk about these in a later chapter. Let me call this leg one. And I'm going to select that and then hold shift down, come over here to my bend deformer and select that. And you'll see that my bend deformer is now on the cylinder. I'm also going to get rid of the grid right now because it's sort of annoying. So let me go over here to the front view. Again, middle mouse clicking. And I'm going to select the bend deformer and I'm going to change that from 400 centimeters, which is the length of the cylinder, something more like let's say 40, 41. I'm going to take this and pull it to the top. And let's go ahead and zoom in so that we can see that. And let's go ahead and adjust the strength. And right now, we're getting a very weird result. Okay? So let's go back to zero. Let's figure out why that's happening. If we come back over here and we look at our cylinder, let's select that, we'll see that we have one height segment. Well, one height segment is not going to allow us to bend this thing. Let's go ahead and take that up to something more like 36. Now if we go back into our front view and we select the bend deformer again, now if we change that, you see we're getting something that looks a little bit more like what we would expect. And change that to 90. Back in here. And now that's looking a little bit better. If we want a better curve here, we can keep adjusting our height segments and our curve will look a little better. I think now what I'm gonna do is put something in here. I don't really know what's under this chair, but let's just say, well, you know what we can do? We can just take the chair top, hold Control or Command and drag to duplicate that. Then I'm gonna take this one, E on the keyboard, Pull it down just a little bit and get that down here. Play around with some of these parameters. Basically, I want this to be something that the chair leg could go into. All right, maybe something like that. That might work. And you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. So I'm going to say that that's going to work right now. Let's go ahead and move this up in the hierarchy here. We don't want that to be a child of the bend deformer, though. We'll call this under chair. 
Now, there are obviously different ways that you could do the same thing and probably get better results, but we're trying to actually use primitive objects here to achieve this. So now let's go ahead and grab a cone. And we can zoom out a little bit. Let's take the cone and put it under the leg just temporarily. Select the cone, zero its coordinates out. Now we'll take the cone out of the hierarchy. And we went ahead and we got it zeroed out so that it's in the same position as the leg. We can go ahead and move this down. Let's go into another view here. Let's go into the front view. Put O on the keyboard so that we can see it. Let's start playing with some of the parameters here with the cone. Let's take the bottom radius down. Let's go ahead and open up the top radius a little bit. Maybe pull this up. Let's go ahead and play with the height some more. I'm going to say that that's going to be good. Pull the bottom radius down. It's going to get something like that. O on the keyboard again. My caps, they look fine. Let's click on here to the bottom so we can kind of play around with this a little bit. I think that looks okay. I'm going to say that's fine. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to take the leg, the bend deformer, and the cone, and I'm going to select those. I'm going to hit Alt G or Option G on a Mac. We're going to call this leg one. Now what I want to do is come up here to the top view, Command or Control on a Mac, and Pull to duplicate that. Let's go ahead and spin this around. So we'll just spin this around, hold Shift down 180 degrees. Let's take that and move that across. All right, so we've got two of those. Let's go ahead and go back to a top view. Let's select both of these. Click Alt-G or Option-G on a Mac. Call it Legs again. And we'll Command or Control and drag to duplicate those. And we'll do the same thing. We'll spin these around. Make sure that we have these properly. Hold Shift down. Spin those around 90 degrees. So now we have our legs. The Top here, top of the chair, needs to be a little bigger. So we'll just grab the scale tool, pull that up, so we get something like that. We may even want to play around a little bit with the height, but you can do that on your own. I think also at this point, I want to take these legs and move them a little bit. I'm going to select these individually. Just pull these out a little bit, about at the edge, and just grab the individual axis. We'll do the same over here, and we'll pull this one out. All right, so that's looking a little bit better. Let's go ahead and select these again. Alt-G, or Option-G, Chair. I'm going to go ahead, open this up, select these two, and put that into this hierarchy. Now I'm going to control or command and drag. And now we have another chair. Let's go ahead and select these, command or control, drag. And we've got four chairs now. We can take all of these now, Alt-G or Option-G on a Mac, call it chairs. The next thing I want to do is create the tabletop. So let's come over here, take a look at our scene. Zoom out a little bit. And actually, we can just go ahead and go back to the top view. Let's go ahead and grab a tube this time. Let's go ahead and take the tube. And we can either do one of two things. We can take our chairs and move those back over here, which is probably what would be best. Let's go ahead and do this. Move these back to the middle. Let's take the tube, which is going to be our tabletop and go ahead and scale that up a little bit, maybe something like that. Go ahead and look in this view. Now that's obviously a huge table. I'm going to take that down a little bit. Let's take the height down considerably. Pull this up a little bit. 
and we can get rid of that center radius right here. Or what we can do is we can open that up just a little bit, and that can be where our table base, this little piece right here, goes. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So let's grab another cylinder. I'm going to look here in the top view again, sort of figure out the size that this cylinder needs to be. Let's go to the object and get that radius so that it fits pretty snug in that circle there, or in that inner radius of the tube. And let's see what we want to make the length here. So let's go ahead and make that pretty long. Let's say maybe a thousand. And we can come over here to our front view and maybe pull that down so it fits in there. And actually, I don't know what I'm thinking here. The thing can't be a thousand. It's got to be about the same size as the chairs. Let's go ahead and make that much shorter. And just pull this up until it's about the right size. Maybe something like that. And we can take our tabletop, Control or Command drag, pull this down. And let's go ahead and adjust the outer radius. Something like that. Back over here. I think we need to pull this up a little bit more as far as the height is concerned. We get that just about even with the chairs. Just want to just play with this until we get it right. I think that might be almost right. I'm going to take this bottom, pull that up a little bit. That fits in there. And now let's go ahead and take the chairs and move these guys out a little bit because now they're too close. So I'm going to take this chair and just have the move tool selected and just sort of pull that out. Take this chair, sort of pull it out over here. We'll grab this one and this one and sort of pull these out. So now what we could do is come over here, maybe grab a plane, and we'll use this as a floor. We're going to pull this down. So we got something like that, and then scale it up. And of course, you could come in here and you could just keep playing with this and sort of making this better and better and better. You may want to come in here for the tabletop. Let's call that tabletop. And you may want to play around with the fillet on that, just so that you get something that's a little more realistic. I like that a little bit better. Because nothing really has straight edges in real life. Everything has a little bit of a curve to it. So anyway, that was a quick little modeling lesson using primitives. Again, if we were doing this for a client, we would use other modeling methods to achieve this and get better results. So bottom line, primitives are a very powerful way to model, and often they're all you need to get the result required.